I hate to be that guy. Uh, actually, come to think of it, no, I really don't. Over the years, I've come to kind of embrace this world. Now, some of you might refer to me as a negative Neil or a Davy Downer or Billy Bitch. But the simple truth of the matter is wrestling fans as, as a group don't always think the most logically and get very emotional, get very caught up in the moment and allow that to cloud their better judgment. So I understand my role sometimes is to be a little bit of the devil's advocate. Try to open your eyes up to different ways of thinking about things. And sometimes, yes, maybe being the rain cloud on your independent wrestling parade, whatever. And that is my role, my plight in this whole YouTube universe. And I accept that. And I know recently we got the big rollout of AEW, All Elite Wrestling. There is the rally outside of the Jaguar Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida. The cons are there. You got Cody Rhodes. The Bucks are there. Out comes Chris Jericho. Oh my God, who else is going to be involved in this? And of course, the wrestling universe of the internet exploded creamed in their jeans more than Meltzer does versus during an Okada Omega match. And that's a lot of cream in their pants. Let me rephrase that. That is a ton of cream in their pants. And in part, I get it. A lot of people are dissatisfied with WWE, as they should be. Look out there in the marketplace for a North American-based wrestling product that they could truly sink their teeth into as that clearly established number two. And if things would go right someday, maybe holding out the hope that they could more closely compete with the WWE because hearkening back to days gone by of professional wrestling, the business was better, WWE was better when there was competition for WWE. And competition could bring out the best or worst in anybody. And at times, competition will certainly brought out the best in Vince McMahon and his company, his baby. So I get wanting to buy in and believe in everything that you're being sold right now with All Elite Wrestling and wanting it to be that and desiring for it to be that and thinking and maybe believing that it could be that. But might I suggest at this particular moment that we pump the brakes just a little bit on this out of control hype train. Let's pump the brakes. It doesn't mean you can't be excited about the possibilities, but when I see idiots talking about how oh, the WWE has real competition, they're gonna take over and AEW is going to be the new standard of professional wrestling. They're gonna be the biggest and best brand. Based off of what? Your hopes, desires, and fucking imagination? That's insane. That is absolutely insane. And it just so departed from reality. Like, like, here's my thing right now. When you look at all elite wrestling, in the grand scheme of things, what do you have? You have a few guys at the top that are known for their work elsewhere. You have guys like Jericho, the Bucks, Cody Rhodes. They can have enough interest, enough appeal to be able to run at least a somewhat successful wrestling brand. No question. No question. With those guys at the top, you can have a standalone wrestling company. Level of success? Hmm. Could be in the eye of the beholder. But just based off of that, no other reason. Those guys being involved <clears throat> and some of the smarts they have in terms of business, in terms of marketing, they will make at least a somewhat successful brand out of an all elite wrestling. And don't get me wrong, it is nice to have the backing of a billionaire family like Shad Khan, his son, and so forth. 
Because that gives you disposable money. That gives you capital, which is critical to any new business that is starting out, especially when you talk about something like wrestling. They don't have to be so preoccupied with cost initially as they're trying to get their startup going, which is basically what this would be as a startup company. They have plenty of capital. So that is promising and exciting. And they have some guys with some level of name recognition, so they're not truly starting up out of the blue. Cool. There is an appetite out there in the wrestling fan base for a more viable alternative to WWE that isn't stationed 18 hours away in Japan or however many hours it is. Cool. But step back and think for a second. Like first and foremost, when you think about an all elite wrestling, like what is this company's brand going to be? What is their image going to be? What are they going to be about as a company? If they are just going to do the same shit that you see in an ROH or an Impact Wrestling or a New Japan or any other number of places, they will severely and significantly limit their potential impact long term. You can't create a new brand and do more of the same shit. You just can't. And if that is kind of the thought, idea, and vision, this will not go as well as a lot of you hope and anticipate. What are you going to do that is different? What are you going to bring to the table that nobody else does? What are you going to do? You know, because when I look at it, like I look at the Bucks. To me, they're as annoying as fuck. But there's no question to me, the young Bucks know how to make themselves money. They are not mega stars, but they are stars enough for the audience that they appeal to and make themselves a lot of money in the process. What the fuck does Cody Rhodes do? Cody Rhodes lives off of his dad and his half-brother's legacy and lives off of the work of others, like a leech. Like even the whole shit with the Bullet Club. Like, well, Cody had so little to do with that that had been established for years. So of course he goes in there and now he's the American Nightmare, Cody, and all this other dumb shit. But you look at him and you're like, you've never truly been that top guy. And now you get into a position where you would have to be a top guy. Can you really build a truly national, internationally successful brand off of Cody Rhodes being a top guy? Mm. You know, Jericho. You can talk about the appeal there, but how much true appeal is there? Now, if he's your one legend, that makes sense. Jericho does a good job of kind of retooling and reimagining himself, but eventually that appeal starts to wear off too. But what are you going to do that is so different? And part of the problem for wrestling now, and when you look at the guys that are going to be brought into AEW, it is no different than most of these other wrestling companies out there in the world, and frankly up to and including WWE. Instead of guys learning how to pre become characters, become actors, and become storytellers, They've instead over the years learned how to become stunt devils and crash test dummies and cheap thrill chasers. And while that might be able to pop for a little bit, you might get a little bit of immediate gratification satisfaction out of it. One of two things either happens. You have to continue to raise the bar to dangerous levels or eventually the appeal of the act starts to wear off. What are you going to do that is different? You cannot make this a flippy fuck fest like a New Japan or ROH and expect it to be a significantly successful American wrestling brand. And before you sit there and say, well, you, 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 Gabe, when the rally was happening, they were trending on Twitter. I don't mean shit. When you talk about how many live views they had for their rally, whatever excuses you're going to make, and I know there are going to be plenty of them, what was their peak? 60,000 viewers? So for these guys with this name recognition, this rally had been announced, and they got 60,000 whopping people to watch them on YouTube, which goes worldwide. Even when you talk about that All In show and the stuff that was shown on WGM before that, they didn't even break, I don't, if I recall correctly, they didn't even break 200,000 viewers. So a little bit of level setting here to the expectations is very important, especially when you consider they don't currently have a television deal. So without television, they are just fucking global farce wrestling in a different capacity. That's all they are. They have to have a television deal and a real viable television deal. 
and what can they really get with what they have? Like, you know, you're going to talk about a TNT or a TBS maybe, somebody along those lines. Are they really going to want to get into something like this? And is there really going to be that level of audience that a lot of the fans that love these guys and love that type of wrestling think there is? This is an example of the wrestling bubble and thinking reality is one thing when it is vastly different. You know, or is it going to be like a WGN Superstation, which to me would be a better fit because there's at least a little bit of a business relationship there. But how much of an appetite is there going to be for a wrestling product and for a company to put it on prime time during the week, let's say, when you look at a standard that was set and you say, okay, let's look at what GN did with that show before All In, a couple hundred thousand viewers, are you really going to have that much excitement level to take on that risk of putting that wrestling show out there and have it put up those type of ratings numbers in a prime time slot? I don't think so. Now, what is their show schedule going to be? What is their TV taping schedule going to be? What's their live event schedule going to look like? What are they going to do that is different? What are their stories going to be like? What are their characters going to be like? What are the matches going to be like? What is the presentation of the show going to be like? The point I'm getting at here is there is all of this excitement about something new and is fresh, and that's cool. But the reality is, other than knowing a few of the people involved, you don't know any of the details or any of the particulars about this shit. So other than hope, imagination, and anticipation, there's nothing else you can really sink your teeth into at this point other than they've announced a show or two that they're going to do. Okay, so what? Then what? Look, I sincerely hope, sincerely, that this plan works. I hope that this product can fill the void, if nothing else, that Impact Wrestling used to fill. We had a million to 1.2, 1.3 million people watching an alternative North American wrestling product every week. The business was better off when you had that. Because while sure, TNA wasn't the Shangri-La and it had its fleas, its flaws, and its issues, and you didn't like what happened to WWE, you could at least have an anticipation that you could go to TNA, Dixie would geek out for you because you used to work for WWE, and you could still make a nice living doing this. So I most certainly hope that All Elite Wrestling actually lives up to the name, that it's All Elite Wrestling, you don't have a bunch of jobbers and jabronis, that you actually are presenting your product in a way that is elite, that is unique compared to the wrestling business of today, but I sincerely have my doubts and reservations about that. But until we know what the entirety of the roster is, until we know what their business plan is, until we know what their schedule is going to look like, until we know what type of any television deal that they have, what their pay-per-view business model or big show model is going to be, why would you get so excited about this? We've been there. We've done that with freaking global farce wrestling. And that was from a guy, mind you, who had already launched a company over a decade plus before. Until Dixie Carter had to come in and save the fucking day. And that ended up being exactly what I always thought it was going to be. Global farce wrestling. Right now, all this excitement and buzz, the hell is the difference between what GFW ended up being and what AEW is? It is a bunch of empty promises with not a lot of documentation of what they're actually bringing to the table. In the real world, if it ain't documented, it didn't happen. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. So while I sincerely hope that these guys are successful, I'm going to stand back, wait, see what happens before I pass judgment too much one way or another. I would just encourage those of you that are so goddamn dogged determined that this is going to be a huge success to temper your expectations just a little bit until you actually know what the hell they're going to do. That's all I'm saying.